Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Barb Mitchell coming to you today from Monaco, where we're together in person at Data Cloud 2022. And joining me is Patrick Jean Grosso, Vice President of MCFI. Could you uh, tell us a little bit for our viewers who may not know, I, I mean, I'm sure they all do by now, but for any who may not, can you tell us a little bit about MCFI? Yeah, thank you. So MCFI is an organization based in Austin, Texas, uh, specializes in data center retrofits, data center upgrades, uh, but recently been doing a lot more in the data center space with turnkey solutions, uh, easily deployable containerized data centers, uh, high density data centers, and then around uh, pre-engineered, pre-designed data centers with uh, low cost of uh, low cost of deployment, around eight million a megawatt, and can be deployed in significantly shorter period of time than most data centers. So for people who are really just trying to get to uh, get to market quickly with a small footprint. And and so you mentioned deployments. I think you've had a lot of news this year already on some of your advancements and announcements and uh, deployments. Uh, tell us a little bit. To give us the highlight reel if you if you can. Yeah. So one of the deployments we've just recently announced was with BBT in Midland, Texas. It's our genius design, small footprints, uh, half megawatt data center. They're going to expand it to a megawatt over time, and it's really for their clients in the Permian Basin that are looking to measure, monitor, and control. Uh, their their energy uh, uh, deployments throughout the Permian Basin. Uh, so that's one of them. Another one is yet to be announced, but it's a, with a client that uh, uh, who's doing uh, Filecoin sort of applications, Bitcoin mining, and it's high density in a container, uh, 500 kilowatts in a 58 foot container that can be deployed in 20 weeks. So from the point of go to the point it's going to be deployed, it's in 20 weeks ready to go out in the middle of nowhere. Hmm, impressive. And I also, I see something in your hand. Do you want to tell us about that at all? I think that uh, you are now a best-selling uh, author, contributor to Greener Data. It's uh, It launched on Earth Day just less than a week ago. It's already a best-selling book for our industry. And, uh, you know, we're, we're quite proud of all the great thoughts in it and a large part of that is, is you know some of what MCFI contributed to this. Can you talk about that? Yeah so number one thank you JSA for uh, really pulling everybody together and getting this done. Um, I think five months and it was you know from get-go to publish to a really good idea, really good concept. Um, I think I'm chapter five. Uh, my English teachers are all on the ground, didn't realize I could you know write as well as I do. Um, but yeah, really excited about it. And it's the whole idea around the sustainability and measuring and monitoring and, and a way to really um, report on sustainability and how we're not there yet. But I think, you know, with the announcement of iMasons and a few other people, we're getting to where, uh, you know, we can measure, monitor carbon output and really be common around what we're talking about and have a, a, a goal to, to reach. And I think that was a key part of this that makes that, that'll help grow sustainability and uh, grow uh, the carbon reduction. Uh, MCFI has really kind of tried to do that from their concepts with our MicroGenius solution, which is a solar-based microgrid that uses uh, solar as the primary energy source, uh, lithium ion for uh, ride through at night, and then fuel cells for, uh, for when sun and solar, or for when the sun is not there and you're, you run out of the energy on the batteries. So a very sustainable solution. Uh, you can use green hydrogen if you can find it. Otherwise, you start with something a little something else for hydrogen backup and uh, alternatively move into green hydrogen at a later uh, or later time. So great to have you contributing to that. And it, I agree, it is, you know, there's a lot of energy around that um, at yeah, this conference, right? It's it's nice that this this lunch just in time for Data Cloud and, and it's been so such a big part of the conversation here this week. And it's so great that you're a part of that. So, thank you know, you. thank you for the work that you do there. Uh, anything else you want us to keep our eyes out for with MCFI as, you know, the year progresses? Yeah, I think you're going to start seeing more of... I, I wouldn't have said this a year ago, but the containerized data center and really driving density and energy efficiency, I think you're going to see more of. And I think this idea around being able to deliver a data center quickly in smaller footprints is something that's really coming. Um, you still have the, the, the cloud guys building big, but it, it's coming with AI and machine learning at, at, at a lower level. And I think 
what we're doing there is really going to help uh, drive the industry forward. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today. It's nice to see you again. I mean, we saw each other a couple of months ago at PTC, but it's nice to see each other again. Good locations to meet. Up. I know they're, they've been. We've been pretty fortunate, but Not yeah, yeah. So thank you, thank you very much, and thank you viewers for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA podcasts. Happy networking.